Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disso. In this video, I will be reviewing the MSI GE67HX with the QHD 240Hz OLED panel, which is a first for a laptop. It has a 12800HX 16-core 24-thread CPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR5, 4800 MHz RAM, which is running in dual channel, and it has a 1 terabyte SSD. Now, the unit was supplied by HID Evolution. And my model, the one ending in the Dash 013, has Windows 11 Pro and costs $2,400. Whilst if you're okay with Windows 11 Home, save yourself $100 and get the Dash 070 model. But before I jump into the review, I want to tell you about a game tournament that I want to run via our Discord channel. Now the idea is to get two teams together to compete against each other. And the winning team will win some goodies from electronics such as mice, headsets, hats, and mouse mats. Now, Bob generously uh, donated this stuff. Now, I want it to be a fun and lighthearted, so I plan on playing an obstacle game called Fall Guys, a fun game called Gang Beasts, where you have to throw each other off trains and buildings where the last man or team standing wins, and also Pico Park, which is an eight-player team-based puzzle game with the fastest team winning. Now I thought it would be fun to stream the games live. Now Burrito King is also working on some fun games like a Pac-Man and Mario Kart type game, so we can actually add them to the mix as well. Now most of these games are free or are really cheap. Now if you do fancy joining in and having some fun, you must be a subscriber and shoot me an email to the address I put in the description below. And I also show it here on, on the screen. Now if it does take off, you know, perhaps we can do this type of thing regularly and include different games as well. Okay, back to the review of the MSI GE67HX. You may ask yourself, well, why, you know, why should I buy from HI Evolution, say not Best Buy? Well, they can add another SSD or increase the RAM without worrying about removing that pesky security seal, uh, seal that MSI always puts over the back of the panel screw. Now, although I don't recommend paying for a repaste because the stock configuration already has the phase change thermal pad on both the CPU and the GPU. And in my testing, it did run nice and cool. Also, don't pay for them to pick a panel with minimal uh, backlight bleed because it's an OLED panel and there will be none. One would argue that the star of the show is the 15.6 inch OLED 240Hz panel. And without a doubt, it is a lovely display. And since response times are so fast on these panels, coupled with a fast 240Hz refresh rate, I saw no uh, ghosting at all. This is fantastic. It's actually perhaps one of the best that I have seen. Now, there is no G-Sync or Advanced Optimus, even though you do have a mug switch enabling you to uh, switch to dedicated GPU only. But I honestly could not see any tearing. I tried to capture it in this video, and perhaps you can pause the video from time to time to see if you see it or not. Now my camera is working at 59 fps, so you will see some blur, but I don't think you'll see any tearing. Now via the MSI True Color app, you can choose sRGB mode, P3 and Adobe RGB mode. And in the latter two, I get 99% of sRGB, 87% of Adobe RGB and 89% of P3. But if you don't like the look of the more saturated colours, you can always switch to the sRGB mode. And for me, it worked in both dedicated GPU and hybrid modes. It was also pretty bright. I measured peak brightness at 366 nits, which is great. And even at 50% brightness, it was decent at 145 nits. And of course, the contrast is just amazing. 366,000 to 1. So it's a great gaming and content creation panel. Now, some of you may be worried about burning, and MSI does have software that will help mitigate this. Now, one viewer, Dusan, recommended an app called the Win uh, it's actually in the Windows Store called Translucion TB, and it makes the taskbar transparent, which will help with the burning of that. And it also looks pretty cool. It is possible to switch from 8 bit colors to 10 bit in dedicated GPU mode if you change the refresh rate to 60 Hz. Now, this is useful for video editing. You can also enable HDR, but I found that this made the screen dimmer. And even in a dark room, I didn't feel it was bright enough. 
Now I did try HDR in Cyberpunk 2077 and you have to make sure to select the right one. HDR 10 or Perceptual Quantization makes it look all washed out. So choose HDR 10 sRGB instead. Now here's a side by side comparison with HDR on and off. And certainly with HDR on you get to see more details in shadow areas. But it does seem to over brighten things a bit in my opinion and you can see this more as I play the game. The lighting is just too bright. To use HDR you have to be in dedicated GPU mode and if you do switch between hybrid and dedicated GPU you will have to re-enable it. Personally I'll just keep it off. Now the biggest issue with the display is that there is an issue with the MSI True Color and the Intel GPU driver. That results in a very washed out display. Now this is across all of the machines as far as I understand, the ones with True Color. They do suggest a fix by uninstalling True Color, downloading DDU and uninstalling the Intel graphics driver. Reboot, let Windows update, reinstall the Intel graphics driver and then reinstall MSI True Color. Well, what I did was as soon as the Intel GPU driver was updated, when you do all of the first, uh, the first rounds of updates, I merely went into the settings and rolled back the driver. And I was good to go. This was quick and easy. So do I think the OLED panel is better than an IPS one? You know, I do. Granted, you do get a, you know, get a glossy display, but I still find that even in well-lit rooms, things are easy to see. And everything just seems sharper too. You get true blacks, not just a, yeah, it's not just a dark grey, plus there is no backlight bleed at all. Now the panel does exhibit some PWM flicker even at max brightness, but I could only see it through the camera viewfinder. Now the next main selling point is the CPU, the 12800HX. It's based on the desktop i9-12900KS processor, and it has been slimmed down to 2mm and used in a notebook. It has 8 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores with a total of 24 threads. 4 more threads than the previous king, the i9-12900HK. The HX line has a massive amount of I.O. and is built for computing with large data sets. It actually supports up to 4 SSDs with 48 PCI Express Gen 5 lanes and 20 Gen 4. Now I believe only the GT77 Titan supports an SSD with PCI Express Gen 5, which is a shame. And the chipset also supports up to four RAM DIMMs and up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. But again, I believe this is just for the GT77 Titan. The GE67HX has two DIMM slots, up to 64 gigabytes in total. In Cinebench R23, the 12800HX scored a whopping 20,375 points in multi-threaded test. In extreme performance mode, which uses 110 watts. 18,779 points in balance mode using 100 watts and 9,057 points in silent mode using just 30 watts. So it was 13% faster than the 105 watt 12700H in the Legion 5 Pro. Temperatures were fine as well, 85 degrees with the max fan and 90 degrees with auto fan using the extreme performance. Now balance mode, it was 90 degrees with the auto fan and silent, it drops all the way down to 56 degrees due to the much lower power. Now, it's credit to the phase change thermal pad. You have seven heat pipes, four heat sinks to keep the thermals decent while using a lot of watts in a small 15 inch chassis. I saw no throttling at all. Using handbrake to encode a 1080p M2 TS file to, uh, to MP4, I got the best time yet. I remember a time when I was pleased to break the 20 minute mark. Now we're twice as fast as that. The 12800HX was 14% faster than the 115 watt 12700H in the Alienware X17R2 and 39% faster than the 5800H in my Legion 7 which to be fair is only one year old. And thermals again were great, 110 watts and 83 degrees using extreme performance and a max fan. However, it did get beaten in the times by CPU tests but not, not by much. My buddy has the same machine and his scored 14,991 points, so there was a bit of silicon lottery going on. I did notice that my score went down when I moved from BIOS 1.04 to 1.07. Here is a slide showing the HX lineup. There are four chips with 16 cores and 24 threads, although I have not seen the 12850HX. 
and the 12950HX are the only ones with the error correction code or ECC memory. So those CPUs are better for critical enterprise applications. The only differences are the L3 cache and max turbo frequency with the i9s, having 30 megabytes of L3 cache versus 25 for the i7, and a max turbo boost of 5 gigahertz on the i9 versus 4.8 on the i7. Now note, uh, the ASUS ROG Strix SCAR 17 SE has a 200 MHz overclock applied to this. Does it make much difference? You know, perhaps one to 2,000 points more in Senior Bench, whilst it does cost more. So I think for the bulk of us, the 12800HX is the value option. So let's look at some gaming. Here's Far Cry 6 using native 2560 by 1440 resolution and using ultra settings. At the top is Extreme Performance Mode with Order Fan. Fairly loud at 53 decibels. Max Fan was only 1 decibels louder, so in this performance mode, the fans are nearly maxed out under load. The 3070 Ti is at 76 degrees and the CPU goes up to 69 degrees. That's pretty decent. Now below that is Balance Mode using the Auto Fan and we've seen much the same in terms of thermals. Now the watts do drop. The 3070 Ti drops from 145 watts to 130 watts and the 12800HX from 52 watts to 48 watts. Also, the fan noise drops to a nice 47 decibels. Now, if you want to play in near silence, then silent mode is a great option. 38 decibels of fan noise. The CPU drops to 30 watts and the 3070 uh, Ti to 87 watts, but the frame rate is still pretty good, definitely more than playable. Extreme Performance Mode already has the 3070 Ti overclocked by 70 MHz, so I also tried pushing it up another 130 MHz. In fact, running the inbuilt benchmark, we don't see that much difference in frame rate. And my overclock did give it another 3 FPS. But I think if fan noise does bother you or you, you don't want to disturb anybody, balanced or silent modes are fine. You can only change the fan profile in extreme performance mode, which is a shame as it would have been nice to have that option in balance mode as well. Now the HX processors are unlocked, which means you can undervote or change the power limits as you see fit. Now the advanced MSI BIOS lets you change many things, including the temperature at which the fans kick in. Once you enable overclocking in the BIOS, you can also use XTU or throttle stop to change the power limits and undervote. Here is Battlefield 2042 at 1080p ultra settings using extreme performance and order fan. And I'm getting over 100 FPS and the CPU was around 70 degrees and the GPU at 77. This laptop has very good cooling and would suit anyone living in a warmer climate. For this 3070 Ti model, MSI says that we can get up to a max combined CPU and GPU power of 225 watts. So we are getting close to that here. I compare the frame rate using QHD resolution against the Razer Blade 17, also with a 3070 Ti. Average frame rate on the GE67HX was 16% faster. But more importantly, the minimum frame rate was 36% faster, making gameplay smoother. Here is Call of Duty Warzone, playing the sniper game, 2560 by 1400 max settings, with ray tracing on. No DLSS or motion blur using silent mode and I was getting frame rates anywhere from the low 60s to high 90s. And that's not too shabby. In fact, it was only just behind the Razer Blade 17, whose 3070 Ti was using 120 watts in its high power mode. Now this game loves a fast CPU, so it does show the strength of the 12800HX. The GE67HX performed great in all the other games I tested, matching the 3070 Ti in the Helios 300 in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but beating it in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but matching the Razer Blade 17 in Cyberpunk 2077, with ray tracing set to Ultra. I think this is a game that is very GPU centric. I think the laptop looks pretty sharp. It has a large MSI logo on the metal lid with their emblem embossed in the center. The keyboard deck is also made out of metal. There's a one piece touchpad and no separate number pad with dedicated volume and brightness keys to the right. Unfortunately, there is no fingerprint reader but they do have buttons to activate the max fan and to switch keyboard lighting profiles. I do wish that MSI had a key to switch power modes like Legion does. The perky RGB is fully customizable, as is the RGB light bar at the front. 
both can be turned off in case you are in a meeting. The True Color software lets you choose a crosshair for gaming, but I think what's more useful is the desktop partition software that greatly increases multitasking by splitting the display into different independent windows. Now I use this a lot on my 34 inch monitor and it definitely does increase your productivity. It does have two 2 watt speakers that are fairly loud but lack bass and sound rather tinny. They do fire out of holes at the sides even though the tweeters face downwards. It would make more sense for the speakers to have grills underneath. Unfortunately it failed my latency mon test. If audio latency is important for you, you're better off with an AMD system, I think. The SSD you get is a Samsung PCI Express Gen 4, and I was advised to update its firmware. Otherwise, when it gets full, performance would drop off a cliff. Now, however, after the update, the read speeds were about the same, but the write speeds went from 4,885 megabytes per second to only 2,192 megabytes per second. I only had 30 gigabytes left on the one terabyte drive, so the firmware update didn't seem to help. Now, unlike the Asus Strix Scar 17 SE, it does have a 1080p webcam. That looks quite, uh, quite good, but the microphone, like on the GE66, is pretty poor. I do have a 1080p webcam up top, and it looks nice and sharp and clear. Now, the microphone does sound a little bit, bit echoey, I think, a little bit tinny, um, but does a good job of isolating some of the noises. Now, here's a keyboard. And when I do the max map. So it does do a fairly decent job of that. So do I recommend the MSI GE67HX? Yeah, most definitely. It has a powerful HX processor that is actually on par with the desktop i7 12700K or even the new desktop Ryzen 7 7700X and the screen is very nice. I think the price premium for the 3080 Ti model makes no sense at all so stick with that 3070 Ti. Now, a viable alternative is the Legion 7i, and that comes with advanced options, which the GE67 does not. But you do get access to the advanced BIOS, which is huge in my opinion. Now, bear in mind, in February, I do expect to start seeing Intel Raptor Lake and Zen 4 CPUs, along with the RTX 4000 graphics. Now, these promise huge gains. Intel says they expect 40% improvements in multi-threaded workloads and up to 25% in gaming and Zen 4 touts about the same. Plus the RTX 4000 promises two to four times improvement. Now before I go, I don't know if any of you are following the war in Ukraine and the terrible atrocities that Russia is doing to the Ukrainian people, but I was contacted about a Kickstarter project where they are looking to make a model of the famous uh, Myria aircraft that was destroyed by Russian forces. I know for any airplane enthusiast, this was a great loss. So having the opportunity to have one in your home is great. Now I do put a link in the description if you are interested. Slava Ukraini.